folks, Riding Side Saddle. And we're back with our last section, our last episode of our book club. Ooh, we did it. It's <laughs> been, it has been an amazing journey. It has been. In figuring out how to be a badass. For right? sure. I'm Tammy. And Lisa. And Mary. So the three of us have been reading You Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. And boy, are we. By Jen Ooh. Sincero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. And boy, are oh, we. She's important. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, and we she want is. her to be your friend. <laughs> Again, more. Still. Love. Yeah. <laughs> we are We are at the end of this book. We are on chapter 24, page 201. It has taken us four episodes <laughs> to get to this point. Yeah. Not because it was long and arduous but because no. there was so many aspects oh, of gosh. true conversation to absolutely. have absolutely and like, even at that we skipped over several chapters we did. Yeah. and and i mean i know that i'm the queen of flags like they're my thing i like to flag things that are important to me there were so many things important to me in how this many book. about 50 <laughs> bullshit <laughs> Maybe 63. Yeah. Still bullshit. <laughs> I love it. I love the tabbies. I'm buying Mary some tabs. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Getting a real book next time. I so am. She can, yeah. So she can have some flags too. So so I did read this book um, for our book club. I, I listened to it a few years ago. And when I was looking for books to do for Riding Sight Saddle Book Club, um, this one happened to come up. I am so grateful I am that too. this came up for you. I am too. And I was, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, that, I read that. That was, that was a good book, but I listened to it the first time. So I didn't already have flags and tabs and I checked it out for my library. So I didn't even have a copy where I could just go back and, yeah. cause you mm. know, on electronic books, you can, you can, you can, right. Put flags and tabs, but, um, so I bought the soft cover book this time and I have all sorts of flags so and, that that part is um, something that's so important, and I am absolutely yeah. going to buy the soft cover so that I can refer back to it. And yeah. you know, I read it through, listened to it, made like really significant connections. But I want it as a reference right. resource, right? right? To be able to go back and say this action point at the end of this chapter resonated with me. Right, it's something that I'm going to put into practice. Right. To be able to do that. And in the audio, audible or your mm -hmm. library. It's um, easy to forget. Yeah. Right? It's, it kind it's of goes at in. The moment. Yeah. Yeah. But you need that refresh. Unless you write it down somewhere or yeah. put a note in your phone or however you keep track of those things. The soft cover. It, it, because you, it is something tangible. You can mm -hmm. pick it up and again. I still think you can't go wrong if you listen to it. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So, so chapter 24, chapter? money, your new best friend. <laughs> da -da 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 I like that. Yeah. Hey. Well, sure. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Best friend. <laughs> this is why some of this gets tricky. Right? So create your best life, your most mm. awesome life. Okay. Well, that means I want to quit my job. Oh, really? What are you going to do about money? What does that look yeah. like? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, hard stops. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. fear comes. Fear enters left scene. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I, the main takeaway from this chapter of the book was the relationship with money. So like mm. your personal relationship with money. Yes. Ooh, and, that's a big one. And she really pointed out, like, if you never had a good relationship with money, how to kind of rewrite that so writing a new truth around money and i actually took her advice i think i don't know where it was but she was like write down like your new truths about how you view mm. money and i actually did that you really <laughs> i, I actually did that. that in my journal because i growing up and even recently i don't have a great relationship with money and so i really was very intentional about like wow I need to be like, I am capable of having a lot of money. And mm. like, when it comes to me, I deserve it. I don't, you know, it was like very hard. I can but manage. Yeah. Like I an can. abundance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I deserve an abundance. So mm -hmm. it was, it was very hard. Honestly, it was very, very hard. But um, 
yeah, a lot of good tips of how to rewrite there are. that. She talks about how money is currency mm-hmm. and currency is energy. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's energy in physical form. Right. Yeah. And often not even physical form at this point, electronic right. form. Well, right. But it still shows up in your bank account like that feels physical yeah right sometimes it does sometimes it certainly doesn't. i mean even if you look on your your phone or you know yeah however you access your electronic bank account you can still it's still something tangible i can spend that much money i have five hundred dollars in my bank account i can yeah. spend five hundred dollars yeah no i get right? that that's tangible i get that sure yeah. sure the concept of it is for sure but oftentimes because of how you spend it if you know it's not dollar bills oftentimes anymore oh, yes, it's swiping right. a card right, right and yeah. then you just see the you difference the in the math, balance right? right yeah you have to do the math <laughs> yikes if but you can do mental math <laughs> but it is it is energy tra- transfers it is. absolutely right it is. yep um it so it's interesting how some of these things kind of came through in some of our first book club episodes mm. because we talked a little bit about this just from the perspective of, um, I remember thinking to myself once upon a time, like I always get what I need. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm never lacking. Mm-hmm. I don't get more than I need, but I do always get what I need. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that is a relationship with money. It is. Like I told the universe what I thought my truth was Mm -hmm. like I know you'll never leave me hanging out to dry but I always have to work really hard for what I get if I get it I've worked really hard for Mm -hmm. it but I do always get what I need and that has been my relationship with money like right but I think what she's saying is that it doesn't have to stop at what you need. I agree with you. Yeah. I'm I'm saying that we have talked about this a little bit just oh, in sure. different chapters already. Right. And I've recognized what my relationship with money has been right. and is. Right. And how it needs to transition yeah. to be a better relationship. Absolutely. Right. I talked in a previous episode about you know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And I carried that through into my yeah. adult life to the point where... I mean, scarcity was a real thing for me and Mm -hmm. fear of running out to the point where I was saving the last little bits of shampoo and conditioner bottles and stashing them under my bathroom cabinet. Because what if I run out? What if I what if I can't what if I run out and I can't afford to buy another bottle? I've got I've got this little stash here. I can still wash my hair tomorrow. But I never had to use the stash. Yeah. So I was throwing things out or giving like when I finally sold my house and moved and emptied that cabinet out somebody literally took a garbage bag full of these half used bottles and took them they're like "Ah, free free money for me I was like free money that's my money (laughs) right but it was free money right for them here's all this product that he didn't care but I stashed it because I was afraid I wouldn't have enough Mm -hmm. it wasn't one or two bottles I'm talking dozens yeah I believe you yeah she talks about this like we all she says we all know that we have to we have to work to make money we've been taught that all our lives but what we're not taught is that we must also align our energy with the financial abundance we seek in other words act as if you're where you want to be don't hang out with sad sacks and people who whine about how broke they are all the time you're not going to get where you want to be if that's what you're being fed all the time right so Erase the words I can't from your vocabulary. Envision what you desire. Set goals. Demand of yourself that you become who you need to become to create the life you desire. Yep. People who have lousy energy around money and then they're left wondering why they have nothing to show for it. I've worked really hard my whole life and all. What do I have? What do I have? Nothing. I'm still renting for crying out loud. I don't even have a house. I've got this jalopy of a car in the driveway. That's not the kind of person you want to hang out with and and fill your life with. 
right? That's not the energy that you want to bring. You're never going to manifest abundance if that's, if that's what you're surrounding yourself with. I'm sitting here a little quietly because I think I'm having a realization uh -oh. like in this moment. Everyone's really quiet in this car right now. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit wondering what's happening. No, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in my head a little bit. Okay. Um, as it relates to money and my relationship with it, I'm realizing that, um, it, that relationship with money is connected to my relationship with, I don't know if that's the right word, is connected to my role mm. as a mother. Mm. And um, and this goes very far back. Um, so kind of talking about, you know, if you surround yourself with, a, you know, a particular group of people or, or consciousness around money or, you know, a about belief money. about money, sure. um, that has, that has like, soaked into mm. um my belief about being a mom mm. and i say that from the place of and um i say that in the place from the place of um well i have to give my to my kids first and if they need something they get that first and i figure out how to manage myself mm -hmm. with whatever's left um and that's, that's the, uh, that is the message that um, I saw growing up. Mm. That is the message that I have lived by through the course of my kids growing up to the degree like, you know, um, like I, for many, many years, like I was wearing bras that were like, 10 fucking years old yeah. because I just like, there wasn't money for that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a sense of, it's a sense of, well, you know, I can't spend this money on that for myself because it needs to be used in other mm. places. Do you, do you know so what I'm saying? So there's not really ever enough to go around. Right. Mm. Right. Like I, I'll go, I, I will go without, and it's a silly example about bras, right? right. But I'll I'll go without. <laughs> women because... do that all the time. Moms yeah. do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like you're yeah. slinging your, you know, boobs into things that are like four sizes, either too big or small, or you know, the underwires cutting th into your skin mm -hmm. because, you know, it's or you popping it through, it's poking through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all stretched no out. No functional, right? You bend over and your boob comes out, and like yeah. all of those things. <laughs> True. <laughs> I understand. But but it is but it is that mentality yeah. of like there's connection there between my relationship with money and my role as a mom. Mm. As a mom, you don't get like your kids have to come first so you get none. That's not healthy. Yeah. 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 I I think I have to sit with that a little bit, but mm. that's why I've been quiet because I'm realizing the connection between those things. My relationship with money mm. is directly related to my role as a mom. Mm. Wow. Hmm. I don't, Ooh. I don't have answers. There's something in there. I don't have answers. Yeah. It's yeah. just coming to me right now. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. So I am remembering, um, and, and I did that same thing that you were talking about, you know, wearing the same clothes forever and, and whatever. Um, but I do know that when I got to be an adult and I worked in a professional environment, I had to wear a suit every day. I was dressing up every day. Right. So I had to wear dress shoes every day. I couldn't wear, you know, tennis shoes or whatever, but I, but my feet hurt. Yeah. So I couldn't wear the same shoes every day. I had to have, more than one pair of black shoes, more than one pair of brown shoes, more than one pair of summer shoes. Well, my kids, what they saw was mom has a lot of shoes, but I only have two pairs. Because when I grew up, you had one pair of gym shoes, one pair of dress shoes. That was it. Maybe you had a pair of sandals in the summer, maybe. 
probably. But you basically had one pair of shoes that you were wearing all of the time, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And so that's what I did with my kids because I don't, I mean, unless you tell me your feet hurt, we're not going to buy shoes just to buy shoes, right. Right? right? I didn't buy shoes just because I had a shoe fetish. I didn't. I bought them because I, because my feet hurt when I wear those same black pumps every day. I have to have a different pair of shoes to wear. Right. I cannot go another day wearing those shoes. Right. But as they, as my, when my kids got to be older, they were like, mom, we always thought you had a lot of shoes. And I was like, what, what? I didn't feel like I had a lot of shoes. Mm. So kind of in reverse of what you're saying. So my kid's perception was there was only money for mom to have shoes. Interesting. When I was feeling like, I am, I, like, I cannot, I literally cannot take another step. I have to have another pair of shoes. Well, and as an adult, the shoes you buy last, like, seven fucking years. Right. Whereas, like, the gym shoes and the sandals and the dress shoes last through six one months. Season, right. right. Or one school year. Right, or whatever. right, right. Yeah. They're shot. Either they're, For sure. they're done or they've grown out of them. Right, right. So, like... Yeah, I have accumulated a couple of pair of shoes because I've had them since 1988. (laughs) (laughs) But that's not their perception. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so much of what she's talking about is perception. Right. Right. So you're hanging out with people who are talking about, I never have enough money. There's never enough to go around. They're a bunch of sad sacks. Right. Right. She says, so when you're... When that is your perception, because that's the environment that you are creating. It's what you're building. That's what you're building. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the cornerstone that you're building upon. The cornerstone. Yeah. Right. Right. And and some of this gets a little bit, a, a little bit out there for me. Like, I don't, I don't. My brain hasn't gone all the way to where she is. You have work to do on it. Yeah, I do, right? She talks about how you, to get into reality about how much you want to make and why. So that's all fine and great. I mean, I can say, I want a million dollars by next Friday. Right? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Woo! Yay me. How the hell am I going to get a million dollars by next Friday? Right? So she talks about, and obviously, you know, a million dollars by Friday, like that, that there's too big of a gap there. Right. But she talks about how to, um, and, and she says, there's a big difference between walking around saying you want a million dollars a year and having crystal clear intentions, fierce desire and hell bent actions towards that specific goal. Right. And that goes, there's, that goes back to my my quandary yeah right like where do you apply action yeah Mm -hmm. that is purposeful and will move you in the right direction as opposed to forcing something like a round peg square hole right yeah and it doesn't fit and then you're just wasting energy and frustration and all of those things yeah i'm not sure there's a sweet spot (laughs) there's a sweet spot yeah So perhaps it is um, envisioning it, believing it in your heart, watching for, watching for the indicators in physical reality and then taking action. I don't know. Making, well, she says, make a list, be super specific about exactly what it is and how Mm. much it will cost. Which you've talked about doing that action before. I did that with my pottery studio. And you did it with your husband. Well, yeah, I did. Right. I mean, like, this is my list. Okay. I did not buy him. (laughs) (laughs) No, but you did identify to the universe what you were looking for and what was important for you. Right. From an energy perspective. Yes. I did not actually, you know, write a check. I did not pay money (laughs) for my husband. He is not a mail mail order order husband. husband. (laughs) Lisa. (laughs) That did not happen. But for my pottery studio, it absolutely was about yeah. money, right? Yeah. I need these these things, this piece of equipment, that piece of equipment, this kind of whatever. And I made a list. And I think it will cost this much money. And it all that exactly happened. Yeah. 
And if you want to hear the whole story, listen a couple of episodes back because it, <laughs> it, I talk about this. I think with Catherine. Yeah. Um, it was an intuition episode that we did. Um, but, but you absolutely can manifest things if you are very clear and intentional. If you vision, envision it and are very specific. Mary, have you done that? Manifestation? Yeah, just from a, like a visioning and a, risk, a list writing perspective. Like how have you done those types of things? Speaking it it's out okay loud. It's okay if you haven't. Yeah. It's, um, this goes a little bit deep, but I would say for me personally, my manifestation is in a different form. Yeah. I have a very strong faith, yep. um, and faith in God specifically. Yep. So, um, for me, I like to pray for things, mm -hmm. um, and God either provides or sometimes doesn't provide and other that's like a negative thing but sometimes um yeah maybe what you want isn't in your best interest yeah, that's right maybe yeah. what i want is not what god wants for me and sure. so um yeah growing in that so i don't particularly manifest certain things um but i know people do it and i know that it can be successful but for me i I believe in God and my faith is in God rather than in manifestation. There, so. there are yep. a thousand different paths yeah, to absolutely. the same destination. For sure. yeah. Right. And none mm -hmm. is better than the other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, so sh I mean, this whole chapter about money, your new best friend, she talks about all of these things. Envision yourself with money and the specific things and or experiences it's going to provide, you know, when, when you, it, it's daydreaming really. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, who doesn't do that from time to time? Right. But when you do that, that's a really very powerful tool. You are telling your how, higher power, the universe, God, mm -hmm. however you connect in that way, you are telling anyone who will listen, <laughs> Yeah. What it is that you want. You're writing your story. You mm -hmm. are writing your story. To the final details. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. And whether that's through writing or through visualization or through prayer, yeah. you're, you're doing the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And going on to the next chapter of the book, we're almost done, I swear. <laughs> but chapter 25. She's like, get a move we? on, chicks. Are we? <laughs> is uh remember to surrender yeah and she points out your faith in the universe must be stronger than your fear of not getting what you want Ooh, yeah that one and that's a big one yeah, isn't it i think that's huge accepting that that what you are given is exactly what you need yeah. right now right mm -hmm. this this is it you know it, it got, that's so hard yeah that's so hard when your bank account says you're overdrawn yeah. how can you accept that that is exactly what yeah. you need right now bullshit I need some mm -hmm. gal dang money that's what I need that's that is a tough one yeah and the quote that comes up I can't remember who's who it's um connected with or who said it but um <laughs> I'm just gonna say it in my <laughs> language like you can't fuck up what's meant for you no is mm. kind of right coming to the wrong. surface yeah you can't get it wrong that like, doesn't mean that your bank account being in a negative balance feels good you can't i mean how do you accept that that well i can't get it wrong my bank account is negative that's not right that that's mm -hmm. a those this is where this is where i have a little bit of a disconnect in my head like the those two things don't those two things like a plus b does not equal c in that equation my bank account is negative that is very tangible I am overdrawn. I cannot buy groceries until payday. That, that, I, I don't know how you get beyond. Mm. I don't know how you daydream your way out of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's deeper than, than that. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that at a very human, very superficial level, I'm looking at my bank account and it doesn't say what I want it to say or what I needed to say because I needed to buy groceries. Now we're going to have to eat macaroni and cheese because that's all that's left. Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. Right. So getting to a place where you can set that aside 
and daydream about what it's like to have a full bank account, to have full abundance, to not worry about money, to not even have to look at your bank account. You know when you go to the grocery store, there's money in there. You swipe your card and it goes through and you walk out with whatever's in your cart. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. Um, what I think is that it is not... Um, I've, I've been in that spot, so it's hard for me to even say these things out loud um, because it sounds kind of flippant in a way because I know how that fucking sucks. I do too. And I know how it feels. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm going to say this, I guess, with that in mind, recognizing that I feel both sides of that, of that coin. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is if... Um, if you're in the situation where you've overdrawn your bank account and I've been there and I know how that feels, um, perhaps it isn't as easy as, well, okay, so let's eat mac and cheese and think about and, and vision about how wonderful it will be to have abundance. Um, it may be more around some of the things that she said at the beginning of this chapter. Mm. What is your relationship with money? Oh, right. I like it isn't like, oh, well, I don't have any money. So let's just daydream about what it's like to have money. Well, let's dig a little bit deeper. Like, mm -hmm. are, are you like living in a space of scarcity or are you telling yourself like stories about, mm -hmm. you know, why you can't or you couldn't possibly or once again, yeah, it's three days before payday and I don't have any money left. Right. Like it mm -hmm. might be deeper than just saying, okay, if I don't have money, let's daydream about having money. Absolutely. I don't think it's that, gotcha. that easy. It, it, like well, there's, clearly there's more, right. there's more to For that. For sure. For sure. Um, and again, I'm not trying to be flippant or say, oh, it's so easy to fix that problem because it's fucking not. It isn't. And I have looked yeah. at the, you know, negative balance in my yeah. bank account um, and sweated it out hard. Yeah. Um, so I I just don't want to make it seem like, duh, stupid. You can right. You can figure this out easily. And that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Because I remember those days. I remember sweating at the checkout, hoping that my card's not rejected. Yeah. And thinking, well, if it is, what am I going to put back? Right, right. Yeah. I've done what, that too. What, what things do we absolutely have to have and what can we maybe scoop, scooch by without? Right. And it, and it goes back to your, you know, putting shampoo underneath absolutely. the bathroom counter. For sure. Analogy. For right? sure. Right, your example. To be like, what is my relationship with money? Right. But when I was in that place, I never reflected reflected back to think, so what is my relationship with money? Right. 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 Yeah. I didn't, and what she, one of the things in this last chapter here, I know it's not the last chapter, but it's chapter 25, um, entitled Remember to Surrender. She's talking about, um, basically it's surrendering that scarcity mindset, right? It is, yep, your bank account might be negative. It's always going to be negative if you continue to focus on how it's negative. Yeah. Right? So surrendering the negative. How do you, how do you get there? How do you do that? You get crystal clear on what you desire to manifest. See it, feel it, taste it, fall in love with it, believe it's already here. Decide you will have it. Inform the universe of your intention by behaving and thinking as if you already have it. Meditate, connect with infinite possibility, your intuition, source energy, God, however you want to define that. There's so many ways to do that. Be grateful that it's yours and it's already here. Yeah. The last thing she says, and I think this might be the most impactful for me, breathe, let it go and let it in yeah that's a, that i mean again it sounds so easy it right? does mm -hmm. yep it really sounds yep. easy just breathe and let it go and let, and it, let come it in, in. right yeah. don't let it go and still hold on to that scarcity mentality because it's not coming back in well, you can't you've right. put something in its place right right, right. 
It's like when your closets are too full, you can't bring anything else in because they're already too full. So if they're too full of clothes you're wearing, that okay, then you don't need to bring more in. But if they're too full of clothes you're not wearing, you don't have any room for clothes that you are wearing. So I have gone through all of these steps to be like, okay, I envision this. I'm a, I'm great. Like I can visualize a lot of shit, <laughs> right? And imagine and yeah. and put myself in that place and and like okay, I have the feeling I'm super excited and I know, you know, what really wonderful things I can do with all of this abundance and I'm, I'm there, I'm, I got it all played out and I'll let it go. And then those, those scarcity pieces come back. Well, what if, mm. well, what, what if I can't, or what if this doesn't happen? And, and all of a sudden phew, the doors shut close. Yeah. Because you're focused on what you can't. Yes. What you don't have. So you can be you're like ninety nine percent of the way. For what you focused on. But man, you shut that damn door at the end. I do. I I I find myself in that spot. It's it's a practice. It is a practice. It's the next chapter is doing versus spewing. Oh. Yeah. Right there's the practice right yeah. there. Yeah. Give your bad habits the heave ho. Breathe amongst people. Set honest goals. Read your manifesto. The, I mean, there are so many. The, uh, there are ways to get beyond that. They're not. It's not an it's, easy path. No, it's not. It isn't at it all. It takes practice. Absolutely, it does. I like that she says you have to keep the faith always, even when your ass is on the line. And your last, <laughs> your ass is on the line Always when your line. bank account is negative. <laughs> right. Yeah. It absolutely is on the line. Right. Yeah, for don't, sure. Don't question it. Right. Right. <sighs> yeah. Again, easy versus simple. Right. Read your manifesto. Read it to yourself before you go to bed and when you wake up every single solitary day. I am so not kidding over here, she says. So she, in the manifesto, she's talking about like your visu your visualization, your goals, what you've yes, created. Your vision of like your ideal life. Your future. In the yeah. present tense, yeah. not in the future. This okay. is what I'm living. Got it. That is your manifesto. This is, you may, it might not actually be your present, but you think of it as, as, Speak to as it. if it is your yep. present. Yep. Right. I love that. I do too. Right. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Become my journal obsessed with it. I get that because yeah. maybe my journal needs to take a different approach. Mm. Mm. Maybe I need to have a separate journal to speak to my manifesto. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I need to have a manifesto. Maybe. maybe. She hmm. says the more you focus on who you're becoming and the more emotional you can get about it, the faster it will become or the faster you will become it. So I remember in an episode you talking about when you manifested the house that you currently mm -hmm. live in. That was a real thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you talked about how you 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 saw the pictures of the listing. Yeah. And then you pictured yourself in it. Mm -hmm. You pictured your things in it. You felt what it was like to be in that space. I became for an months. absolute crazy person about it. <laughs> be obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I absolutely did. And look at you. Mm, there Look I am living you in live your in house. house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're almost at the end. I think we have one <laughs> chapter left. <laughs> yes. One chapter left. Poor <sighs> Mary. She's back here. She's fading fast. I got to pee so bad. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Mary. Oh, my bladder's full. <laughs> oh, poor Mary. <laughs> Sorry, friends. <laughs> It's been a couple of hours yes. in the recording studio. We haven't <laughs> taken a break. So poor thing. We're on chapter 27. Beam me up, Scotty. Mm. <laughs> Our last <laughs> chapter. <gasps> the last the chapter. Marathon. I know it has been. <laughs> Believe it or not, we are at the end of this book. Yes. Yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. I have one flag. <laughs> Wait, that's, yeah, that's exactly I have where my. One last flag. You do? All right, Mary, is, you yeah. go ahead. You go. Okay. She says, give yourself the permission and the means. Yes, this includes the money to be who you are, regardless of what anybody else thinks or believes is possible. Mm. And I love that. Yep. Because you only get one life and you have to be yourself. 
You do. And it does not matter what other people think, even though we take it into very oh, deep that's consideration. So hard. <laughs> yeah, we do take that into consideration. Yeah. She's yeah, she says, Don't do not deny yourself the life you want to live because you're worried you're yeah. not good enough or that you'll be judged or it's too risky because who does that benefit? Nobody. No not me. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. I remember um, there was a time when uh, there was a shop for sale in the town I was living in at the time. Um, it was a pottery studio. It wasn't the same kind of, uh, it, for with clay, there's different kinds of clay. So um, it wasn't the kind of clay that I was using. Um, I would have had to switch out the kilns. They didn't fire to a high enough temperature for the kind of clay that I like to use. But it was one of those, um, it was one of those places where you go in and you choose something off the shelf and you and you glaze it and then you leave it there. They fire it and you come back and pick it up later. Mm-hmm. Well, that was, that, I mean, it was pretty cool. I had gone in there with my kids um, before I had really done anything with pottery at all. And, um, and that was fun. And, you know, we made a couple of things. And, um, so when I learned it was up for sale, I thought, oh, I should, I should buy it. That would be really fun. And I, like, I called a banker. I met with the the woman who was selling it. I was really interested in this. And then, and then I started thinking about what people would say. Hmm. And, that's shut and then right I down. started thinking about how am I going to pay my bills? Yeah. And then I started thinking about how I'm a single parent. And then I started thinking about all of the things in reality. And guess who never bought that place? Yeah. yeah. Mm. I could I could give you countless examples of those situations yeah. that I have, like, gathered up throughout mm-hmm. the years. Mm-hmm. Like these wild, fantagonal, that's not a word, but no. like... <laughs> Just like fanciful ideas yeah. and dreams. And man, I played them out so hard in my mm-hmm. head. Like details upon mm-hmm. details yeah. played out and then nothing and because then I that's not going to work. I chickened out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a, um, a house for sale. This, it was an old field stone farmhouse in the country. Had a barn in about, I don't know, a few acres. I don't know, seven or ten acres, somewhere in there. And uh, the problem was, well, a couple, there were several problems. One of them was the house, um, there was a fire. So it really was just the shell of the field stone house. The Mm -hmm. walls were mostly gone and ones that were there needed to be torn down. And um, Mm -hmm. the barn was in terrible shape. It it had already been repaired. Um, The foundation had been repaired and it needed an additional repair in the same place that had already been repaired. And, um, so there was a lot wrong with it, but, um, boy, I dreamed about that place. Mm, I, I, I had created the whole floor plan for the house, how I would lay it out and mm. all of these things. And every now and then I drive past there because I can. Right. Yeah. And, and I still think that's a missed opportunity. Yeah. And, um, man, do you want a life full of missed opportunities? No. Or do you want some gounding adventure already? Life is ridiculous. Life is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Why not have some fun along Mm -hmm. the way? It's going to be ridiculous anyway. So who cares if people are like, man, did you see what she just bought? That was nuts. Mm -hmm. So you fuck up. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to do that a lot. Yeah. I do that without even trying. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's kind of a superpower. (laughs) Pretty good at it. Yeah. Better yeah. than math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So don't, so I guess, I guess at the end of all of this, follow your heart. Yeah. And believe in Take, yourself. Believe in yourself. Take some adventures. Because, don't always be safe. Because the likelihood is if you follow your heart and believe, truly mm-hmm. believe in yourself, you're probably going to be successful. Yeah. It'll work out. Because you're a badass. Oh, <laughs> nice, Mary. <laughs> Love that. Nice. Well, I don't know that we can That's end it. better than oh, no. that. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You are a badass. So just be one. Thanks already. for riding along with us mm-hmm. in this um, four episode book club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had no idea it was going to be this long. We we had we had some, you know, 
grandiose idea that we'd get through one book a month. Well, that's not happening. No. So we might be at like one book a season. That's okay. We're yeah. ch- we're changing it up. We are. Yeah. We're just we are. We're not locking ourselves into anything at all. That's so right. so this was our book book club pick for season two. Yep. Mm. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We absolutely did. I've got all these flags. I'll be looking at this book more than once. It's the second time that I've been through the book. And um, honestly, if I had flags the first time, I'd had just as many flags. So um, thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging in there. I know it's kind of long. Thanks, Jen, for writing this book. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. We want Sintero. her to be our friend. We do. We'll figure that Dang out. It. I'm going to vision <laughs> that shit. <laughs> First on, that's right. Zero. First ought, on my manifesto. She ought to be careful <laughs> about what she puts in her book because people might just do it. I'm going to magnetize her <laughs> into this shit. She'll be like, what the hell? How the hell did, did I get these here? People come from <laughs> bitches. <laughs> these Midwestern, <laughs> Midwestern witches. <laughs> okay. All right, all. All right. So, Mind Garden Media. As always, thank you very much for your hard work, Todd, in putting our podcast together, doing all of the magic behind the scenes and editing and adding in our theme music and all of that good stuff. And plus, Mm -hmm. you know, probably a thousand other things that we don't even know that you do. So you make it seem so easy Easy. and seamless and hand it back to us all tied up in a neat little bow. So thank you. Thank you for all of your hard work and helping us be successful awesome. yeah absolutely badasses that awesome we are badasses <laughs> <laughs> thank you to our listeners too um for listening in every week and for um supporting us and sharing um our content with those friends um you know as you have conversations i know that some of these things come up in conversations that you have with your friends share it um Absolutely. Like, subscribe, yeah. share, all of those things that helps us um, increase our a- tribe. Absolutely. For sure. So, all right. Until next um, time. Until next time. Well, next time will really be next season, won't it? It will. Mm-hmm. So after this, we are taking a couple of weeks off in between seasons. Um, that, that seems to work out pretty well for us. We need a little bit of a break. It does take a lot of time and energy Um, to put these episodes together. So we just need a a little break and then we'll be back. That's right. So um, next season, while we don't have it all pieced together just yet, um, we've got a couple of planning sessions that we've, um, that we've put together already. So we'll be um, coming up with some good stuff. We'll figure out our next book club and, um, and we'll report back at the beginning of next, um, next season. So Hang in there with us. Come back and and, uh, tune in again. Um, It'll be a couple of weeks. We'll have a couple of snacks um, that we expect to put out. And um, we'll see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.